atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat. And when you think about the heart, it's really just a car engine. So it has a number of components and all of them can become problems. Just like in a car engine, the appropriate timing of the contraction is controlled by electricity. That electricity manifests as a spark plug in the heart that controls the heart rate. My field is arrhythmia, and arrhythmia is the field of electrical abnormalities. And so in atrial fibrillation, the spark plug misfire, and they fire so rapidly that the mechanics of the fuel injector can't keep up. They just freeze up and stall. They actually don't work anymore. And as a mechanic, if I were one, I would not let you have a car with a stalled fuel injector, and I certainly don't want my patients to have it, particularly if it's causing them symptoms. The common scenarios that people describe to me are chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, uh, feeling their heart race. It comes on over years and gradually goes from coming and going, which is what happens early in the course of atrial fibrillation, to really being there all the time. When people have it happen so slowly that they don't even notice that they've lost the ability to have energy to do the things they want to do, to go up and down hills, to breathe well. They often come to me without an ability to even tell me they feel it. So the treatment of AFib is varied and it's patient-centered. My field is focused on rhythm control. So patients who come see me are patients who don't want to be in atrial fibrillation anymore because their symptoms are intolerable. The two options for rhythm control are drugs and ablation. The benefits of ablation are that compared to drug therapy alone, in multiple studies, ablation has been shown to be more efficacious. Ablation is a way in which we can actually use heat energy to cauterize the areas that are of abnormal electricity in the heart. And what's amazing about ablation is it's gotten to the point where we can do it through a very small incision in the, in the veins of the leg, so small that it doesn't even require a stitch when we're done. It heals on its own within a few hours. And we take a catheter, and a catheter is a wire. It's an insulated wire, just like the wire you might use to plug in your camera. That wire goes into the heart and we use very sophisticated mapping technology to basically see it in the heart. We actually have a virtual reality where we can visualize the catheter moving through the heart and we use that to then burn the areas where the arrhythmias have, are coming from. For our AFib ablation program, we track everything with a high level of detail to make sure we can give people quality, uh, both in terms of outcomes and safety. And our average procedure time from when the patient's put to sleep completely to when they wake up is around 120 minutes. So a patient can have an ablation, they're up and walking around later that day. They go home the next day with just a small little hole in their leg, and we can have them in a new place in their life. So what's really exciting for me about electrophysiology is as opposed to the other fields of cardiology, we can offer cures. One in three patients in the U.S. by the time they're 80 years old will have atrial fibrillation. It is an epidemic, but a treatable one.